not necessarily staying on the subject of favor, but it's a continuation of some of the components of what we began to talk about the last time we met, the last time we had this moment together. And now we want to talk about the issue of the way through. The subject for today is the way through. You know, one of the most important things and segments of a life are the crossroads where people find themselves in diverse situations and are wondering what is the way through. What is the way through? And today, uh, I want to discuss something, not just the way, not necessarily the way you might expect it, but I want us to pray for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because it is a moment again with you, the Lord. I ask that you will open the heavens and cause that your glory will fill the hearts of your people. That everyone that hears this, your grace will fill their ears. Your word will minister grace to every hearer in the name of Jesus. Now, I am talking today about, my name remains Abraham Akatu. Um, your simple servant of the Lord and the minister of the gospel. It's a privilege and it's the highest call and privilege I will ever have to be associated with the word of the Lord that created the universe and my maker. This day I want to look at the way through. The way through. Now can we look quickly at Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. I'm looking at the book of Psalm 23, verse number... Psalm 23. Now, I would be taking verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. And the word of the Lord says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table for before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we are looking today at the issue of the way through. The subject we are looking at today is the way through. And I'd like you to know that this is still in relationship to the possibilities of the challenges that befall a man favored of the Lord. I started discussing with us last time as the Lord enabled us that the degree of challenges you go through are not necessarily a, a representation of the absence of favor. I said sometimes some of the most challenged people are some of the most favored people. That is, 
the degree of favor upon the life of a man can actually make him a point of attraction to challenges. Challenges can find a man of favor most attractive. But that the joyful and the great news is that God draws a line, draws a limit for every challenges that comes to a man of favor. And we began to look at the issue from the case study of the life of Joseph, who was highly favored of his father, got the coat of many colors, was highly attractive to envy from his brethren, was thrown into the pit, had his garment soiled in a pool of blood, the blood of a lamb, had himself sold out by his brothers. He was sold out to the Ishmaelite, whom in turn retraded him to the house of Potiphar, who was looking for a slave to buy. He was exchanged from one hand to another like a mere commodity. Joseph was eventually a slave boy in the house of Potiphar. And eventually, the Bible says, the wife of Potiphar began to find him attractive. Now we began to say that a man of favor is attractive to all manner of things and all manner of people. He was attractive to the good, to the bad, and to the ugly. He was attractive to some of the worst and humiliating situations a man can go through. He was attractive to abandonment, loneliness. He was not a man of many company. He was a man of much loneliness. He didn't have a clique. He didn't have friends. Because he was left all to himself. Yet a man highly favored. Now, today we are looking at the book of Psalm 23. From verse 4 to 5. Where the Bible began to say, Yeah! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You know, it's a very popular passage that we most of us are very familiar with. And a lot of times we use it to close church services. Some people say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's how most church services in Nigeria that I know end. But today we are going to be looking at that same passage in a very peculiar manner from an approach that may buttress the point we want to make this morning. Now, I want you to know that whatever you are faced with, Whatever challenges have come your way and are coming your way, I wouldn't like you to look at those challenges as an end in themselves. I want you to see them this morning as the way through. There are only passages. There are only passages. They are only a transition, not your end. There is nothing you are going through currently that is your end. Somebody out there who is thinking, why me? Why am I going through all of this? Upon the prophecies that hang over my head, with all the things that God has promised me with all the issues that God has spoken to me about. Why have I to go through all these things? Like Gideon would say, if the Lord be with us, why are all these things befalling us? You see, 
Whenever God allows what seems like an evil, he only allows it for a greater good. He only permits certain things to come your way for the greater good, to the glory of his name, those situations hold. At the backings and at the womb of every situation you find yourself going through is the baby of a testimony, is the baby that will be born forth for the glory of the Lord. Jesus, at a point in John chapter 9, was passing through and coming through a particular city with his disciples. And there they saw a man who was born blind. And the disciples asked Jesus a very pertinent question. They said, was it this man that sinned or his parents that he should be born blind? And Jesus answered them. You know, in those days, every uh, misfortune that befalls a man is traced to an evil the man did. They quickly interpret it to be that the man must have committed a sin. He must be a sinner or he must have done something wrong for something wrong to happen to him. But you see, uh, under the grace covenant, under the covenant where we have a better light to the word of God as the veil has been taken away, having turned to the Lord, we have come to a realization in our own generation that there could be light afflictions which are not a semblance or are not a, a proof or are not to say that a man have necessarily committed a sin or done anything wrong. But in the book of Romans chapter 8, I heard the apostle Paul saying these light afflictions which are but for a moment work it for us. Afflictions are God's employees. They are not your destroyers. As a matter of fact, nothing can destroy the child of God. Anything God allows into your life will only assemble themselves as hands that must be on deck to making sure that all things would work together for your good. Because you love the Lord. Now, I'd like you to see from the very clear presentation of the word of God that the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 that these light afflictions which are but for a moment work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see, the degree of glory that awaits a man determines the degree of challenges and afflictions that are likely to cross his path. The reaction, every reaction from hell against a man is a very clear indication of the degree of divine attention positioned and targeted and, and turned and beamed towards that same man. Can I tell you the truth? The devil is never interested in a man God has no interest in. And there is no such man on earth after all. The devil has no interest in what does not hold value in the eyes of God. So, the fact that the devil is so interested in your case is an indication that you have a value. You have a worth before God. There is a premium. There is a value. There is a weight of glory hovering over your destiny to make the devil so mad at you. Praise the Lord. You know that one of the things the devil, the enemy wanted so badly that was the reason they casted him, they threw him out of heaven, was glory, 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 glory. So whenever he sees that God is 
plotting and planning a degree of glory over your life, he is jealous. He is exceedingly envious. He feels, but why would I be rejected for wanting this thing? And then the same thing I was rejected for was given to a man who was never probably asking of it. He was he's always jealous. He's always envious. Praise the Lord. Now, so I think that according to the word of God, if you see yourself going through some challenges currently, whether they be financial, whether they be spiritual, whether they be physical, whether they be economic, whether they be relational, whatever form of challenges you find yourself going through, they are not an indication that you did, you necessarily did anything wrong. They are not necessarily an indication that God is unhappy with you. There could only be a proof and a reason for you to rejoice. Ah, no wonder Apostle James said something. He said, if any of you is going through something like a challenge, going through trials, let him rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice when you go through diverse tribulations. Why would James say rejoice? Because it is an indication that God is interested in your case. Because the devil is not a careless businessman. He does not waste his investment, his effort, and his attacks on a man that means nothing to God. He doesn't waste anything called satanic resources on a man that holds no value and that holds no stake in the agenda of heaven. The devil does not waste his attention on such people. It is only because God has an interest there is the glory God has plotted and planned. There is a weight of glory that has been prepared for you to make the devil so mad at you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, going back to our passage, where we read in the book of um, Psalm 23, verse 4, the Bible says, Though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup runneth over. Praise the Lord. Now, you can see with your own eyes, by your own self from that scripture, that whatever you are going through actually is a walking through. It's a way through to a lasting testimony. Whatever you find yourself going through right now is only a passage, not a destination, not your fate, but a passage. He said, though I go through, through, you are only passing through. And you will pass through and come through because the Lord is not in any day willing to leave you go through all by yourself. He said, for thou art with me. How did I know thou art with me? You know that, let me share with you a mystery from the word of God. You know that it takes light to see shadow. Before you can see a shadow, there must be a light, a ray of light nearby. If not, it will be utter darkness. That you are able to see a shadow, it means the situation is not altogether dark. There is a ray of light at the background. So whatever shadow threatens you right now, the reason you can see that shadow as a shadow is because there is a ray of light revealing that shadow. Praise the Lord. If there was no ray of light at the background, you would never have seen that shadow. 
Can I tell you that God is the ray of light? At the background of every shadow you see around your life currently, whatever shadow of challenges, whatever shadows of afflictions, whatever shadows of pain, whatever shadows of sickness, whatever shadows of helpless situations that you've tried all that is within your reach and cannot give you result. Can I tell you the reason why you see that shadow? Is because there is a light. May you turn from those shadows today and begin to focus on the light that reveals the shadow. And soon it will be glaring to you that the shadows are no more. When you focus on the light, shadows are behind you. No man faces light and sees shadows in front of him. Every shadow you are seeing in front of you currently is because you have left the light behind you and focused on the shadow. You have left the reality, which is the light that is revealing the shadow, and then you have focused on the shadow. The moment you turn away from the shadow and face the light, I bet you the shadow will be right behind you. Even as I speak to you right now, if you are observant, if you are very observant on this broadcast, you will see my shadow behind me. Why is the shadow behind me? Why is the shadow behind me? Child of God, why is this shadow behind me? My shadow is behind me because I am facing the light. The direction I am facing is where the light is. If I were facing the shadow, the light would be behind me. But the reason I could see the shadow only behind me, the reason the shadow is behind me is because I am facing the light. That is how you enter through situations. When you decide to stop facing the situation and you face the light, the God who reveals the situation the God who allows the situation to be, to, be, to be clearing for your eyes to see and not let the situation swallow you up but that you could see the situation. You are alive to see the situation. I want you to turn facing the light and back your shadows. And you would notice that the situation will fade away when you face the light. It is only when you face the light the situation fades away. Praise the Lord. Now, this morning, I'd like you to know that whatever it is facing, coming face to face, coming into your life, the challenges of your life are only a way through. Are only passages you are going through to a lasting end. You must not give up within the passage. You must not give up in the situation. You must not throw in the towel. You cannot hands up now. You cannot give in now. You must allow the God who is with you through the valley bring you to the place where your table is already prepared. Praise the Lord. But you see, before you get through to the place where the table is set before you, you must need pass through the valley or the shadow. You cannot jump the, the valley. No man jumps the valley. Even Jesus needed to go through. The Bible says he learned obedience through suffering. I like you to read the book of Hebrews. You will discover that the word through was used equally to describe how Jesus became the captain of our salvation. The Bible says he became the captain that he may make the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering. Look. Whatever challenges you are going through, I know this kind of gospel is not the gospel you hear in the contemporary put pits. Not everywhere. But I know there are still here and there um, a handful of God's servants 
who are making this truth known so that we don't just have sugar-coated Christians and shawarma believers, believers of no strength, of no resilience, of no endurance, of no perseverance, of no capacity to stand any pressure, that is not a prepared soldier. The Bible said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. God has not called any of us with a promise of ease. He has only called us into the promise of possibilities. He has not called us into the promise of a pampering. He has called us into the promise of possibility. The promise of perfecting. Praise the Lord. The Bible speaks about perfecting the saints. Perfecting the saints is through a process. It's through a, it is, it is, it is never a jump over the valley. It is a passing through the valley. Whether in the Old Testament or the New, you will gather that nobody ever followed the law without passing through it was the apostle paul the apostle of grace nobody explained grace better than apostle paul he was the one that thought in the scripture that we must through we must as good soldiers of christ endure hardness he was the one that spoke about how we must we must walk through through a lot of challenges to achieve a life that appeals to God. Not because we are under the law, but because the world will not make it easy for us. The world system will never make it palatable and easy to serve the Lord. The Bible says, Paul was speaking, he said, those who must be godly in this present age, must suffer much persecution. See, there is nothing you would want to do with God that holds value in God's opinion and in God's perspective that would be devoid of satanic reactions. The same Apostle Paul has suffered penuries, has suffered hunger, has suffered persecution, has suffered stoning, has suffered all manner of floggings, has suffered all manner of scourging, all manner of afflictions, only in his quest to publicizing the gospel to the Gentiles. He passed through the passage. There was an affliction. He called it light because in comparison with the weight of glory awaiting him, the affliction was considered light, no matter what he went through. He said he was hungry many times. He was through lack many times. The same man went through tests many times. He was thrown out of cities and stoned and left half dead many times. That was the apostle of the greatest degree of persecution, yet the apostle of grace, Yet the apostle of the greatest degree of spiritual mysteries that makes a lot of people big men of God today. Men of God that we see and we call great men of God in our dispensation. And even as we speak to you currently, whatever we are speaking are not devoid of reference to the things that were caught from the realm of the spirit, from the third heavens, by men of serious afflictions, yet the greatest teachers of the mysteries of the grace of God. Praise God. Now, so, to count grace as an exemption from difficulties, challenges, or favor as an exemption from afflictions and persecutions is an error. There is no such thing as that in scriptures. Even David, the man after God's own heart, spoke. He said, though I go, though I walk through, through, he was not a coward. He was not a baby. He was not willing to run away from the situation. 
He was willing to walk through it. He was not willing to turn back like the Israelites before a Red Sea suggesting a return to Egypt. He was de decisive. He was determined. He was resolute. He was completely made up to walk through it. He was not even talking about running through it in a hurry. He said, I will walk. Even when I walk, even though I walk, even though I walk, the word though there connotes the fact that it must not happen all the time. It's a probability. But it's very high that the chances are that you will come through. Because Jesus says, in this world you have tribulations. In this world you have tribulations. It is a very bad daydream to imagine that you will never go through challenges as a child of God. That you get born again or not born again in this world, whether you are a believer or not believer, in this world you have tribulations. The hope it is that, the hope that we have is that for the children of God, the Bible said, Jesus was speaking, he said, in me you have peace. In me, you have peace. But in this world, you have tribulations. To round up briefly, before David could get to the place where there is a table set before him, where his enemy has become very helpless about his case, and they could see him prospering and growing and having the overflows of his life, and they could do nothing about it. Before he got there, he needed to go through the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord was faithfully with him as the light that revealed the shadow at the background. I'd like you to tell somebody wherever you are, encourage somebody who is going through challenges and difficulties and life-swallowing situations. Let them know that that situation will not swallow them. As I let you know today that it will not swallow you. That situation is not your end. Let them know that I said according to the word of God, according to the audacity of God's word, that there is a God that raises the light at the background, revealing that shadow of situations. And he will not leave you swallowed up in the valley. Let them know, as I tell you today, in truth, I lie not that there is a table prepared for you. If you can only hold on, if you can only stay strong in the Lord, if you can only stay strong in Him and in the power of His might, you would arrive at the place where your table will overflow. Your table will know an overflow. Your table will know the best of God's provisions and help. Your enemies are about to be very helpless about you. Because God is taking you through the valley to knock out every element of fear in you. Where even if you have to sit on the same table with your enemies, they will be helpless and you will be fearless. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through is a way through to a lasting end. And in case some of you have lost a loved one, You've lost a brother, you've lost a sister, you've lost a neighbor, you've lost somebody dead to you. With all sense of condolences, I yet want you to stay encouraged in the Lord. That death is not as you look at it. Death in itself is not an end. It's a way through. Even death is a way through to a lasting end. Death is a way through to an eternal end. So all we play, we, 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 we use the moment to pray and trust the Lord for is that God will grant everyone around you the privilege of knowing him so that even death will not be a threat to any one of you. But we pray 
that none of your lost ones will be cut short in the midst of their days. None of those you love will be cut short in the midst of their years. But whatever you are going through, no matter the degree of the situation and the pain, no matter the circumstance and the degree of the hurt, if you are a child of God, or if you are willing to embrace Jesus today, you would notice that at the end of it all, you will laugh at last. You will celebrate God's faithfulness. His glory will be made manifest at the end of that situation. And you will not be swallowed up by that shadow. Because there is a light at the background. There is a God who reveals the shadow. Turn away from the shadow today and face the light. And you would have the shadow behind you. If you remember nothing in this broadcast, don't forget this. Turn your back on the shadow Face the light that reveals the shadow and you will have the shadow behind you. Stop facing your shadow and back in the light. Start facing the light and back your shadows and move on. The Lord will grant you grace tonight that you will be strengthened in the spirit of your inner man this morning and it shall be well with you. As you share this broadcast, as you subscribe, as you comment, as you like, as you make sure every man on your broadcast list, on WhatsApp, on TikTok, on Instagram, wherever it is, you will love to share the broadcast on the social media. Please be encouraged to do that. You may be saving somebody from an attempted or a contemplated suicide. You may just be delivering a soul who is about to give him the towel and give up the situation they are found in. You may just about to deliver another believer from compromising because of what they are going through. You may just be about to, to, to save a soul from eternal doom and damnation. Can I pray with you this morning? Just in case you have not given your life to Jesus, I want you to know that Jesus is the answer he is the light at the background that reveals the shadows. He is the one that prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He is the one that makes your enemies helpless about your case. He is the one who brings you out of your defeats. He is the one who gives you a goodness and a mercy to accompany you permanently. He is the one that gives you favor that no man takes away. He is the one that is able to see you through whatever situation you go through. He is the one who is able to keep you strengthened in the spirit of your inner man. To persevere and endure whatever you find yourself facing for time. He is the one with the grace and the capacity to help you abase and abound. To help you know how to go through any form of situation that comes your way. And he is the one that makes you more than a conqueror at the rest for the rest of your life at the end of it all. Can I pray with you this morning? Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus, put your, life, your right hand on your chest and say this prayer with me. Father, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. I'm sorry for being so unfair to you. I'm sorry for being so wicked in my ways. Today I repent of my sins and I turn to you. I cut off from everything that draws me away from you. And I ask that you be my Lord and personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life and delete my name from the book of death and hell. Today I declare you are my Lord and personal Savior. I renounce the world. I renounce the devil. I renounce my past. In Jesus' mighty name. For those who are sick and suffering from one affliction or the other, wherever you are, I want to pray with you. Lay your hands where that matter is bothering you. And if it is the whole of your body that feels sick, lay your hand on your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
whatever situation your people are going through today, whatever that affliction may be that this soul watching this broadcast is going through, I declare that healing upon this life right now. I declare this soul listening to me by the transmission of your word. I declare healing right now. I declare normalcy right now. Those trusting you for whatever it is that is the burden in their heart that weighs them down, that constitute the shadow. I declare that situation gone off their fronts. I declare that mountain before them taking off in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It is done. Strengthen the faith of those who are trusting you for strength. Strengthen the faith of those whom for a moment must still go through whatever you are passing them through as a processing for their lives. I declare strength and grace to hold on, to bear through, and to overcome. And for those who are due for the removal of that situation, remove those mountains from before them and release them into their liberty in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for staying put. I remain your brother, the minister, Abraham Akatu, and I trust that the Lord will answer that situation in your life and that you would stay encouraged, you will stay blessed, and that everything you're trusting the Lord for will materialize in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to encourage that you subscribe to this channel, share this broadcast, send in your comments, and share it to your broadcast list on whatsapp on instagram on on telegram on TikTok, on 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 facebook wherever you want to share this you can share and let a soul be helped let a soul be blessed the lord bless you i love you so much have a beautiful day ahead god bless you